Hello, welcome to another video. This is a very, very, very simple integral, but it's been presented in a way that is not simple. And if you don't know what to do, it's impossible. Well, that's the meaning of impossible. I don't know what to do. Okay, but when you know what to do, um, it's something that shouldn't take you more than three minutes to integrate this. And I'm gonna show you why. Firstly, you're not used to integrating three functions as you see x, sine x, cosine x. I, I don't know how to do three function integrals. I'll have to do two at a time. But when it involves trigonometric expressions like sine and cosine, there's always some manipulation you can do for trig so that what was four becomes three or two or even one. As you can see in this case, we may not be able to modify this x, the polynomial, but can we do a combination of this? And the answer is yes. Because one of the basic first things, the first basic identities you're gonna learn once you go into double angle is the double sine angle, okay? Uh, double angle for sine. So if you recall this, let's do sine two theta. You recall that sine two theta is two sine theta cosine theta. Do you see that I can isolate this and just take this to use it to divide this and now I have a single function to replace this? That's the good thing about trig identities. When you know them for integrals, they always help out. So let's rewrite this and say, if we divide this by two, so it means that one half of sine two theta is sine theta cosine theta. And now the integral can be rewritten as we're gonna have um, x sine x cosine x dx is now the same thing as the integral of x times one half of sine two theta dx, which is the same thing as one half of the integral of x sine, not theta, x. Come on, we're using x in this case, sine two x. Dx. Now, do you know how to integrate this? Yes, it's a product of two functions. Whenever you're integrating the product of two functions, you must ask the very first most important question. Is the derivative of one of the functions a multiple of the other functions? That is, if I differentiate one of the functions, does it contain the other one? So, if I differentiate x, does it contain sine 2x? Obviously, no, because you're going to get 1. What if I differentiate sine 2x? My answer is gonna be two sine 2x. Does it contain x? No, it contains two and sine 2x, but x is not standing by itself. If this was x squared, then we would say u substitution. So the first question for a product is u substitution. If it doesn't work, the next question you wanna ask for a product is integration by parts. Okay. And does it mean, what you ask yourself is, what if I try to differentiate one and integrate one, is it gonna make my life simple eventually? And in this case, the answer is yes, because if what you're integrating contains an algebraic expression or what you call a polynomial, life is gonna get easy as long as the other one can be integrated. And trig functions are easy to integrate or differentiate. Polynomials are easy to integrate or differentiate. So this is um, a simple problem. And I would recommend you follow the Liate order. That is, you always choose to differentiate logarithmic functions first. If they don't show up in the problem, you look for inverse trig functions. So this is logarithmic functions, inverse trig functions, inverse trig, that's the next most important one to differentiate, okay? Remember that we're gonna use our formula uh, that the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du, okay? This is what we're gonna use, which is a modification of the product rule in differentiation. Okay, when we learn calculus differentiation, the product rule, if you modify this, you're gonna get it back. I don't wanna go into it. Okay, then the next one is algebraic expression. Okay, algebraic expression or expressions are the ones that contain x, x squared, all that. 
those are also easy to um, differentiate but this is the third ranking and we already see it so you see it's more important to differentiate this than to differentiate sine 2x because behind this is what you call a trig function which is where sine is resting and finally exponential functions so if you see e to the something or 2 to the power 2x minus 1, that will be the last thing you want to differentiate, okay? Because everything else, uh, you, the, everything else needs, to, need to be, needs to be differentiated before you can go back to it. Okay, so I just took my time to show you how to order. So now, this is going to be our u and this is going to be dv in this formula, okay? So we're going to say that the integral of x sine... 2x dx, okay, is equal to uv. Well, we've got to know what u is and know what v is. So let's quickly do that. We have claimed that let u be equal to x. So what is du? What's the derivative of x? It's 1. And we're also claiming that dv is sine 2x. So what will v be? What's the integral of this remember when you integrate any sine function you just go the opposite direction of differentiation so if you integrate sine you're going to get negative cosine okay remember that the derivative of cosine is negative sine so the integral of sine is negative cosine and then you have to divide instead of multiplying like we do in, in trig in calc in differentiation you're going to divide by this number so it's going to be one half negative one half no, no, no. So let's just say v is now equal to negative one half of cosine two x. Okay. So that's what we have. You come here. You write your expression out. So this is going to be equal to what is u v now? It's going to be u times v. So that is x times this. That's negative x over two cosine two x. And we're going to integrate something else, which is going to be the integral of v du. I should have moved this away from here. Move. What we have is, we have uv already written. We're going to subtract the integral of v times du, which is going to be this times this. Oh, it's just negative. So it's negative 1 over 2 cosine 2x. Okay. Now, dx. Usually... I would use the table method, okay, because I don't have to write all of these. But I've noticed that many teachers don't like the shortcut of the table method, which I think they should allow. That is my um, opinion of it. If you know how to do it and it's more efficient and more effective, I think after you understand that students know what to do, let them use the table. Let the children use the table. Okay, so let's go on. And this is going to be negative x over 2 cosine 2x minus we need to integrate this oh there's no problem here anymore because we just have a single function we don't have a polynomial or a product okay so this is gone and if this negative half comes back out here it becomes one half of cosine sorry integral of cosine 2x dx okay we know how to integrate this so the answer is negative x over 2 cosine 2x plus one half of one half of sine 2x and plus c. So you notice that when we take the integral of cosine, it gives us sine, not negative sine like we do in, in uh, differentiation. So here is what we've got. So this is equal to negative x over 2 cosine 2x. Plus, this one half multiplies this one half, you get 1 over 4 sine 2x, okay? Plus c. Okay, and what's our answer? Remember that what I just did was just this part. I did not use the one half, okay? So if I introduce the one half, it means I have to multiply each of these by one half. And don't worry about the c, we can still write c, because c is a constant, okay? So what we're going to have is you say, therefore, one half of the integral of x sine 2x dx. Maybe we should actually write this. Okay, x sine x 
cosine x dx is equal to, you're going to multiply this answer by one half, which is going to be, I'm going to bring the, this one forward. So one half times one fourth is going to be one eighth of sine 2x. And then I multiply this by one half is going to be minus, um, let me write one fourth of x cosine 2x plus c. Now you could have written this as c1, c1, and then you just leave this as c. It doesn't matter. c is c. Whatever you see, you see. <laughs> that was not smart. Okay, never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye. <laughs>